So we've got a very interesting uh, market this week as we head into what is going to be a cavalcade of central banks starting this Wednesday with the Bank of Canada and through the following Thursday we have eight of the G10 central banks out so all of the major ones and the ECB on Thursday is the big focus this week and these are coming as we've seen the recent focus on commodity currencies, the comeback in commodities and on risk appetite comeback as we're looking at uh, the 200 day moving average and the S&P 500 is sort of the, the, the threshold if you will on whether we're still in this bear market risk uh, uh, environment or whether we're going to actually go back towards the highest of the cycle and we've sort of put this whole rough start to the year uh, behind us. I, I think the, the writing's not on the wall either way for that so that's very interesting this week as well. Heading into this uh, first central banks of the, of the week, there are two of the three this week that I find interesting. The RBNZ on Wednesday night for us in Europe, of course early Thursday for those out in, in New Zealand and then the ECB on Thursday. The RBNZ is quite interesting, I think, because if you look at the commodity theme, it's more supportive of the industrial and uh, uh, industrial commodities and energy, which sort of favors Aussie especially, but also the Canadian dollar, and not so much the New Zealand dollar, where the, the commodity focus is more agricultural and on milk specifically. I think the RBNZ as well is, has much higher risk of waxing dovish here than the RBA, uh, possibly even cutting rates, but certainly with dovish guidance. And this gets more traction when you have a, a strong commodity theme elsewhere. If we look at Aussie Kiwi, it's way behind the curve in terms of catching up to uh, rate spreads, uh, which suggests that it should be trading much higher. So looking for Aussie Kiwi upside is an interesting way to, to play a weaker Kiwi without worrying about what the dollar is doing at the moment. Or the dollar is in a bit of a vacuum this week in terms of economic data. Now for the ECB, a lot of expectations going into this meeting. The ECB is going to desperately try to avoid uh, a December 3rd style meeting where it sort of overpromised and underdelivered. The market was very heavily positioned going into that meeting, which is why the reaction was uh, as sizable as it was when the euro appreciated the second most ever in a single day after that meeting. This time around, of course, positioning is much more, uh, much more reduced, much more uh, suppressed than it was that, that time much more reaction therefore to the downside if the ECB does manage to clear the, the bar for dovishness and delivers more than the market is expecting. What is the market expecting? It's hard to say at this point. Certainly a, a, a deposit facility a cut. Some are talking about them doing a tiered system as the Bank of Japan does which would allow for over a certain amount, uh, the, the highest tier in other words, allowing uh, for the ECB to cut to, to any level really on the negative side. Uh, I don't know, I'm not so focused on the, the interest rate side thing. I think the more important aspect here is, is the ECB innovating on new assets or new ways to bring relief to bank balance sheets? I think that's the really key focus over the ECB. If they merely up the sovereign uh, purchase rate a bit, cut the deposit facility or do the tiered, uh, tiered rate system, uh, I think we get a modest euro downside reaction to that. It's more about this other innovation on the QE side that uh, would, would, I think, send euro dollar down towards the 106 level eventually and, and beyond to the downside and get that central bank policy divergence story working again.